All right, welcome everyone to Startup Open Pitch Night. I'm Ilya Fedorov, and on behalf of Tribe Tampere, I welcome you here tonight. And I'm Vivian Liang from Food Tech East Finland. Tribe started this event with the intent of creating a safe space for people to share their ideas with like-minded people. After all, uh, all businesses start, start with an idea and the brave individual pitching those to each other. Now we're excited to take this event online and hope uh, of reaching a wider audience. We're especially grateful to our partners, Tampere Entrepreneurship Society, Business Tampere, BayX, and Food Take is Finland for helping us making this event happen. Oh, thanks, Ilya. We're glad to be here. Uh, today, we'll, we will be starting off the program by listening to a few brave souls share their pitch with us on the live stream under the following key themes. Food sustainability, circular economy, and environmental sustainability. Why did we choose these themes? because people are more concerned about the growing impact our society is having on our planet and looking to support businesses that not only deliver great service, but also are good to their workers and to the environment. This might seem like a big ask, but with the right mindset and continuous advancement in the technology, we believe all businesses have a role to play in maintaining healthy people, a healthy planet, while still maintaining a healthy profit and we, and we have a few presentations today for you uh, that will show you uh, how it is possible to make. Great to see all of the excitement happening from you, Ilya. <laughs> I'm quite nervous, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> More nervous for the startups and the feedback they're going to get. Uh, after the startups have finished presenting, we will then continue with open networking in the Brella platform. Uh, those participants that were brave enough to pitch on the live stream can expect a personal invitation from one of our mentors to receive one-on-one -on -one feedback if you haven't already. Again, we really thank Business Tampere for taking the time out of their busy schedule to do this for us. Uh, for those who are still a bit too shy to pitch on stage, you are more than welcome to head into our spontaneous open pitching room after pitching startups finish at the main stage, where you can share your ideas privately with your peers. And remember, it doesn't have to be a business idea. You could be pitching your skills to another business, or what you are planning to create in a closest future, or what you think is really, really relevant uh, to be implemented or innovated in the current scene where you are. Great point, Ilya. Thank you for bringing that up. Let's kick off the first track. Food sustainability. Yes. So one of the first things people often ask me when I tell them what our organization is doing is why food? It is quite easy to forget how elaborate and complex our food system is and what impact it has on so many different aspects of our lives. As recently as March of this year, the UN still estimates that one third of greenhouse gas emissions come from our food systems. Action Against Hunger stated that in 2021, 690 million people will still go hungry every day. And let's not forget that we still need to feed 10 million people by 2050. In addition to that, the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO for short, estimates that 17% of the food waste, uh, was wasted worldwide last year. Obesity is on the rise in many parts of the world, and it comes not only with an impact on our physical health, but our mental health as well. Some of you might be asking, what is a sustainable food system? The United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, or FAO for short, defines a sustainable food system as 
a food system that delivers food security and nutrition for all in such a way that the economic, social, and environmental basis to generate food security and nutrition for future generations are not compromised. The FAO then further breaks down the definition by mentioning three key criteria a food system should have. It is profitable throughout, meaning it's economically sustainable. It has broad-based benefits for society, social sustainability. It has Finally, a, prof, a positive or neutral impact on the natural environment, meaning it is environmentally sustainable. Developing solutions that address all of these criteria is not easy, which is why Food Techies Finland has been working hard to create an open community where aspiring food entrepreneurs connect, can connect with like-minded people here in Tampere. We're proud to be working with Business Tampere to help build and grow the food tech ecosystem so that we can create more sustainable food solutions, not only for Tampere and Finland, but eventually the world. We have also partnered with Business Tampere and Suomen Pien Tuotoja Tukku, I hope I'm saying that right, to help create the Gastro Arena food innovation platform here at P6. It's a project which you will be hearing a lot more about in the coming weeks, stay tuned. And we welcome all people of all experience levels and backgrounds. You don't need to be a food systems expert, a master chef, or a veteran farmer to make a positive impact on our planet or our food system. Although, of course, it's great if you are. For more information on our activities and how you can get involved in creating more sustainable food systems, visit www.foodtechies.fi or feel free to contact me at the virtual Brella booth under the sponsors section. The two startups pitching from our community today are working hard to tackle the so social sustainability aspect of food. Tasty Teaching is a startup that uses food as a tool to promote mental health and wellness, while Food Up is attempting to revolutionize the food community sharing experience. We hope you will be inspired by their pitches. Hi, I'm Gyan and we are team Tasty Teaching. Tasty Teaching is the birth child of a culinary hackathon hosted by the Future Food Institute in affiliation and collaboration with the FAO of the United Nations in its first cohort of the Food and Climate Shapers Digital Bootcamp back in July last year. We are a team of three from Italy, Finland and India and we focus on mental well-being through culinary pedagogy and mindful eating. Poor mental health overall reduces lifespan by 10 to 25 years. Physical or emotional distress increases the intake of food high in fat, sugar or both. Healthy diet can increase your lifespan by 12 to 14 years and also give you a happy mind. Our solution is to promote mental well-being through culinary pedagogy and mindful eating. COVID-19 has resulted in poor mental well-being and poor food choices. Work and finance and family put together as a community causes a lot of stress within one's mind, home, and even the community. Let's turn food practices as a tool to promote mental well-being and reduce stress, healthy and happy minds. We are currently prototyping, ideating, and working on four different approaches to our solution. We are focusing on food gamification, online and offline, empowering community superheroes in terms of interns, uh, organizations and even potential partners and have corporate workshops for major revenue streams for small and medium enterprises in and around India. As you can see, this is a virtual session hosted by the Food eShow this year. Tasty Teaching was given the opportunity 
to validate a few of its aspects. We had over 75 countries participate and over 3,000 participants for the event. This is another example of our workshop with Google India where we focused on empathy cooking methods and focusing on resilient mindsets through cooking. We currently are prototyping these four steps on culinary meditation, food gamification, culinary de-stressing and cook-alongs. We also are trying to have a 50-50 balance between digitization and offline resources. We would like to prototype a global one-of-a-kind experience customized to cater each other's needs and develop a stronger community, create a new employee benefit scheme through the resources that we would like to sell as a program. As you can see, we currently have five partners on board where we have been validating and also prototyping with the same. Here are a few comments by our community and the people that we interact with. Our value proposition predominantly focuses on SDG 2 and 12, but over the period of time, we hope to achieve SDG 3, 4 and 17. These are our potential partners, validated partners and university partners. Clean India Journal is a project that we would be beginning in corporate India that's starting very soon. Here is our timeline as to show you on how we started last year in July, working through community building, data mining, refocusing on our problem statement and even testing hypothesis. We currently have begun bootstrapping, increasing our focus groups and even corporate networking. We also are beginning with our corporate and community programs for small and medium enterprises in and around India. We also have tied up with a university that would be pledging over 200 participants for Tasty Teaching. We hope to have a minimal viable product and brand and hopefully have been ready for pre-seed funding by the third quarter. Our immediate needs. We are collaborating with the community in terms of internships, volunteers and focus groups. Remember, mental well-being through culinary pedagogy and mindful eating. Thank you. Hi everyone, this is Chandra. I'm the founder of Foodoop. Um, Foodoop is a location-based mobile app that connects users with home chefs for multiple home food experiences. The concept of Foodoop came out of a simple situation and that is that people are increasingly looking for healthy, fresh, and a home away from home food experience nearby. But importantly, they also want to discover the local culture of food and not just use food as an opportunity of eating, but to appreciate the local culture behind that food. And restaurants are not able to deliver this. And that is what gets us thinking as to how great it will be for us to have a solution um, which can be exclusively defined for home chefs where users can search for any food experience they want to have and match with a home chef nearby with, with whom they can share that experience with. The food experience can be either eating with the hosts or simply picking up the food from the hosts or even learning a local exotic cuisine together or for that matter even renting a chef who can come to our place and cook. The market potential is huge. We are looking at um, more than $3,100 billion of food services uh, last year. 
and this obviously constitutes multiple services like full service which is restaurant quick service like um, takeout um, fast food non-commercial which is street food and of course cafes and bars the serviceable available market for foodoop we are looking at full services which is close to 1.2 trillion dollars and the market share which is the net sales via foodoop um, for the full services we are looking at close to 2 billion dollars by 2025 a little bit about the product foodoop is a location based mobile app that will connect users with authentic home chefs who can offer any of the below food services let me just explain a bit more in terms of what these five services are all about. Eating with Home Chef. The Home Chefs can schedule the food and cultural experience offers into the app and they can pretty much define the schedule on a weekly, monthly or a yearly basis for the host to pick from. And they can set the price. Now they can either put a food experience of a seven course uh, Italian cuisine or they can even say uh, a seven course Italian cuisine with a local museum visit. Any local or international traveler can view the offer in the app and they can book the experience ahead of time. And as I said, it can be just not a dining experience, but a dining and a local cultural experience as well. When it comes to pickup or delivery, it's simple. Um, we just don't want to cook at home today. Um, you just open the app, you just search for the cuisine you want to eat and you get matched to a home chef who has uploaded the daily menu into the app. You just define uh, at what time you want to have it picked up or you want to have it delivered to your home directly by the home chef to your place, to your doorstep. A live cooking class. Um, YouTube, pretty much every single cuisine is available for us to learn from YouTube, but it is impersonal. The concept of putting live cooking class behind this app is to ensure that people are coming together, cooking together and discovering new stuff together. We are understanding of the situation today uh, in the COVID kind of a scenario. If people don't want to come together and um, cook together, there are options for them to schedule a live video session as well over the app. Rent a chef, um, straight and simple. Um, if you want to just have one chef who would want to come to your home and cook food for you, you can just simply just order the chef and the chef will be available at your doorstep. Lastly, free share many times we are looking at so much of stuff that we have at home that we would rather give away it could be fresh vegetables at home it could be a packaged food or for that matter it could be any other food that we just want to give away so food gives an option for you to freely share such items with users nearby who can just pick up the food from you so that is behind um, the concept of how the whole food loop works uh, in terms of how this actually works in action it's fairly simple three steps open the app search for the food experience that you want to have find matches it's this is whole thing is google maps based so you will have uh, reviews you will have the chefs nearby you can view the kitchen pics and you can finalize you can customize the order and they're good to go Business model is um, again straightforward. We are looking at commission based. So for every transaction that happens via Foodoop, we uh, intend to charge 15% commission. So on a 2 billion uh, sales happening via Foodoop, we are looking at close to 0 0.3 billion of revenue by 2025. We bootstrap the product already. Uh, since January, we have um, got a freelancing team to start building the app for us. Um, we are looking good to launch the beta version of the app for select users to test uh, by May. And then we are planning to do a full fledged launch in July uh, across Android and iOS store. Thank you so much for your time. Please do visit www.foodhoop.com uh, to learn more and also to sign up for the beta test. My contacts are available if you want to have any thoughts that you want to discuss further. Thank you so much for your time. And that wraps up our pitches for the food sustainability track. Thanks again to Tasty Teaching and Foodoop for submitting those pitches to us. And don't forget, we actually have a poll for anyone in the audience who wants to participate. 
I also now have Tommy Oiti with me from Business Tampere, one of the mon uh, mentors who will be giving one-to-one -one feedback to the startups. Tommy, what did you think of the pitches so far? Thank you for having me, Vivian. Uh, it's, it's been a great pleasure. So uh, about these cases, I, I think actually both the cases really connected well with the, uh, the global uh, trends. Uh, this the teaching, uh, indeed, uh, as a very intriguing philosophy behind it would be really nice to, to hear more about it and about the, the market entry strategy. And, and then, yeah, the second one as well, uh, really actually looking forward to hearing more about the, the rent a cook uh, approach. Like there was so much information covered. So just looking forward to having those one to one matchmaking sessions that we're going to have in the afternoon. Yes, I think both startups are going to be offering an interesting array of services. So once again, uh, to those startups, uh, either Tommy or one of the other mentors will be reaching out to you for the Brella one-to-one uh, -one session and giving you uh, some personal feedback. Anyhow, let's take a look at the poll results and see what everyone else thought, Tommy. Let's see about it. Yeah, I think it's still pulling up. Oh, wow, it was a 50-50 split. <laughs> oh, yeah, interesting. I, really, really strong contenders, both of them. Yeah, very, uh, always interesting to hear. OK, and uh, now uh, we're going to take a short break, and uh, we'll see you soon again at 2.25 PM. And welcome back. And now we have circular economy track. And uh, as you might have heard this sentence, uh, Kierto Talos in Finnish, uh, it is one of the biggest uh, uh, trends, uh, uh, actions that is happening all around the world. But let me take you a little bit um, from, from wh where I am standing, how, how I see the soccer economy and its importance in the, all this environment development for creating better environment and more responsible businesses. So imagine, imagine yourself 
on an island. And by the way, this island behind me, this is uh, Tikopia, and uh, people have been living there for tens of thousands of years. And uh, they, were, they never killed that island as we are doing with our planet. So how, how do you think they uh, succeeded in doing that? Uh, the amount of resources that they are using on the salad is obviously limited. And uh, in generally speaking, on the planet, there is no term such as a waste. Therefore, all the resources on that island was never uh, a waste. Therefore, we uh, in our business world uh, mistakenly consider uh, waste or something that we're not using as a waste and we're trying to get rid of that and it has very bad connotation therefore uh, probably uh, to reach some of our goals and uh, sustainable uh, development goals or any any other goals probably we should reconsider what is actually uh, those uh, nutrients that we are calling waste and maybe we should uh, go uh, from uh, eff effectiveness, no, uh, from eff from efficiency to to effectiveness of using all those resources that basically in our hands and they are all uh, fi finite. Therefore, uh, you can see behind my back again uh, this cradle to cradle uh, approach. That was one of the first approaches uh, developed uh, in order to uh, improve the quality uh, of products and usage of materials that. Uh, uh, use, use there basically and uh, if you think about it uh, nothing goes away from from the cycle we're living on a planet where we're living in, in cycles life cycle our own uh, digestive cycles and everything that we are throwing away coming back to us well you might heard all about those uh, plastic uh, garbage that's uh, flowing floating around the ocean and uh, uh, degrades into microplastic and we're consuming it basically every day even even like today it's still with us so with circular economy we have frameworks we have approaches and we have understanding to define uh, what nutrients in which cycles we are using and how to use them more uh, effective in a more effective way in a more efficient way and a more a positive way, not just sustainable way, because I personally hate that ter term of sustainability, because what we are, what are we sustaining? And Michael uh, Braungart, one of the creators of uh, Creators of Gradle System, usually makes a joke, uh, okay, what if I ask you about your relationships and you tell me it's sustainable? And well, it's a very pity story or somebody's relationship is sustainable. So we have to create more good. Therefore, we have to define those cycles, technological cycle and biological cycle. And uh, those nutrients becomes, become toxins only when they are in the wrong place. Therefore, if we keep them in their own cycles, if we use those materials longer, we upcycle, we regenerate resources, we recycle, etc., etc., uh, we can have more eff efficient business models. We can uh, provide more value and do more good for the planet than ever before. And with this um, uh, big uh, uh, table created by Ellen MacArthur's foundation uh, called Bubble uh, Butterfly model, uh, you can inspire yourself in the very first step of thinking about what business are you going to. You can consider yourself, okay, are you in technical cycle or are you or you are in a, in a bio cycle? And you can start using those approaches and design your business model straight away so it creates good business, positive business. It will never be carbon negative because it's impossible. We're always we're made of carbon and we, and we leave all those you know, uh, threads behind us. But what kind of carbon you're leaving behind your business your life and i strongly believe that soccer economy can uh, give you a lot in the very first step of innovating your business model or creating a practical way of using those resources that you will be reusing or using in the future in your business therefore uh, i strongly suggest you to 
use this innovation tool and design your products and create better future, good and positive business for all of us and your children. Thank you. And yeah, now it's time to take a look at uh, several examples uh, of uh, startups and ideas who are trying to do their best for it. And uh, first will be Ruska Skincare. Uh, let's take a look at that. Give us a moment. Hi, everyone. My name is Rahel. I am the founder and CEO of Ruska Skincare. And today I want to tell you a little bit about our startup. And I want to start with one question. Are we polluting the environment with our personal care items? So have you ever thought about this? And I can tell you that the cosmetic industry actually produces or creates 120 billion tons of plastic waste each year. And also not only plastic waste, but also recyclable excessive packaging that they use for unboxing experiences etc. And what we do with Ruska is that we actually create a plastic free and local alternative to what exists in the market. And how do we do that? We reduce the packaging to a real minimum, not only the packaging, but also our raw materials. So we really try to step back a little bit and go back to the roots. We source our raw materials for our products locally. We have local supplier of oil, we have a local supplier for beeswax, and also for some herbs that we use in our skincare products. And those suppliers are actually within a 200 kilometers radius around Tampere. And also our packaging that we have to use is reusable and or truly recyclable, meaning we use only um, components that we know 100% how they can be recycled. This means that we use glass, we lose, use aluminum, we use paper, cardboard, um, a little bit of wood um, and hemp strings. Yeah. And for us, it's really important to be transparent for our customers. So one of our products is actually not just a hand balm that is already ready, but a do-it-yourself kit to make it yourself. So we openly show the customer which ingredients are in there, what, what is the recipe, and how they can make it themselves. And we also want to include a QR code on each of the raw materials that will bring the customer to the supplier so they can actually check out where the everything comes from. And in addition to that, we wanna even go one more step further and include transparency into the pricing. So each step of the manufacture from manufacturing to like, like raw materials, labor, transportation, uh, duties, some additional costs, maybe the packaging, etc., so that you can really see the list of how the price is created. And the same we would like to do for the carbon footprint. So this is in progress at the moment. It's a bit bigger project to do that. And this plays into also our sustainability value because we want to improve our carbon footprint. So by looking at each of the steps individually, we see where we can improve our carbon footprint and also how we can assess a little bit the life cycle of each of those. And for the future, we wanna to try to get a certificate also to not just call ourselves sustainable, but actually have proof that we're trying our best to improve it. And to not only improve our product, but improve basically each component um, to make it as circular as possible. And of course, we need help for that. And if you have any ideas how to make it better, how to improve actually our approach and how to look at uh, the packaging or the product itself, how to make it more sustainable, please share your thoughts with me. 
Um, I will be on Brella for networking and you can just reach me today. And otherwise just drop an email, reach out on Instagram, follow us, have a look and yeah, just see and share your ideas. Don't just keep them because we need to work together in order to make this world a better place. And this we can do even with something as simple as skincare. So I really look forward to your ideas and to, yeah, to you reaching out. Thank you so much. Hello everyone. We are left the fashion clothing store for the future. Uh, we decided that there is a time to change the problems in fashion. Fashion has two major problems, pollution and slavery. And what I mean with pollution and slavery? In fact, 85% of our oceans are covered by trash coming from our clothes. And in the other hand, more than 170 million kids are involved in child labor. These are major issues that don't only involve the pollution, people involves all of us. And we need to change this. So we're creating this fashion clothing store for the future. And what do you mean the fashion clothing store for the future? We have one dimension of us that collects and operates. And what I mean with collecting and operating? Remember when you have your plastic bottles at home and you just go to key market and you drop and you get money? Well, what about doing that with clothes? That's what we are exactly doing. We are collecting your clothes but giving you money as an exchange. After we're collecting your clothes, we send them to fabric and companies and artists designers ready to transform those clothes those old clothes into new clothes which is amazing and is all made in Finland how we make money we make money out of the selling of our clothes advertisements and partnerships we know we not only wants to improve the quality of fashion but we want to improve the quality of life around the world creating a more local production what our main comp competitors we can say that are all Welcome back. Uh, so that was our two representatives of those who care about circular business models uh, and creating more good businesses than just a standard profitable, all that uh, old, old <laughs> styles. So Tommy, uh, it's, 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 it's great to have you here back with us. So you heard uh, both of them. Uh, what is your opinion? What would you uh, say from your background as a, as a mentor and uh, as a person who can inspire for actually doing business. Yeah, thank you for having me again. So first of all, I would like to say that uh, both of these founders clearly are on a very good mission. Uh, I, I definitely like the vibration and energy of, of those, these uh, founders that they want to do good, but they also want to make business. And, and quick comments about both of the cases. So Rus Ruska Skincare definitely uh, about making a, a sustainable circular solution uh, for skincare products that you could have a food, carp carbon footprint uh, calculated for, for the customers. That's a huge mega trend, obviously. There are, there's a lot of competition. Probably there could be uh, some partners uh, that could be reached out also to, to make that uh, thing accelerated. And then about LEF, I, I suppose this is even more on an ideal level yet, but like the idea definitely uh, th th there are those huge uh, industrial complexes and, and manufacturers that, that are in the, in the cloth business. But I, I suppose like the future is definitely uh, for smaller uh, businesses to take over of the circulation of, of the material. Like that there has been the economics of scale uh, before with all these kind of material streams. But like if you can find your own, own proper niche uh, in, in your service, so, so you can be really uh, well off uh, on, on this trend. Yeah, fashion is a big, big thing and of yeah. course creating so much uh, unfairness and, and pollutions as well. So yeah, we are, we are hoping that uh, these ideas, both of them will, will succeed, uh, of course. And uh, you had a chance to uh, vote in a voting round number two uh, for one of those whom you like the best at the moment and of course they are not competing, we're, we're more, mo mostly about collaboration. Therefore, let's check uh, what we have in our poll. And uh, yeah, I guess you still have time to vote uh, till, till the very end. So at least inform us about your preferences. 
Okay, uh, currently we can see that Ruska skincare is leading. Uh, well, this is not a surprise because the idea is developed and already actually implemented, therefore it's very reasonable. But yeah, we we wish uh, Laugh and Ruska Skincare all the best and uh, we're definitely gonna keep in touch with them. They yeah, are... really interesting cases. You should really book uh, meetings in, in Umbrella platform uh, to talk with the, the founders uh, of, of this. Uh, and, and maybe you could yeah. negotiate and you could just suggest uh, new things, new improvements and, and maybe some partnership ideas for them. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for a reminder. This is actually very important. You have a pretty unique opportunity now to use Umbrella to talk with the uh, founders and those who hold those ideas about maybe what they need, how they can help you or if you think that you can help them. Therefore, keep in touch, see you on Brella and you can book meetings with us as well. You can find us all there. Thank you. And we go to the next uh, uh, part, but before that we have a little break. So, and we see you in, uh, well, let's say in a few minutes. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tatiana Chesniak from the BayX, one of the co-organizers of this event. Our main goal is to encourage entrepreneurial thinking and doing. We want to expand the startup ecosystem of Finland and the Nordics by organizing various kinds of events related to entrepreneurship. BayX plays the role of a connector between individuals and teams who have business ideas, as well as between people and companies and organizations who can help take these ideas to a new dimension. We believe that the startup ecosystem of Finland and the Nordics have a lot to offer and are able to help reach your full potential. Startup ecosystem of Finland is actually ranked among the top emerging ecosystems in the whole world. The total amount of funding from private equity investors to Finnish startups and growth companies was over 700 million euros between January to June 2020, which is significantly higher than the global average for emerging ecosystems. We, BayX, are here to contribute to bigger achievements together with other ecosystem players. So the track we are presenting today is environmental sustainability. Why did we choose it? 
Environmental sustainability has been among the top discussed topics for many years and it is opening many more different exciting opportunities. The future of our planet depends on how we as companies and individuals act today. And as BayX, we are trying to raise awareness of this issue among startups. Just like sustainable food systems, sustainable businesses are basing their practices on economic, social and environmental sustainability principles. All three aspects are important for minimizing negative and increasing positive impacts of a company on the world. So, what to do if you want to start a sustainable business? Well, in Finland, you can find organizations that can offer you support and benefits at any business stage. Take a look and join entrepreneurship societies, business communities, startup hubs, incubators and accelerators. As an event company, Bayax is organizing speed networking event startup edition on 25th of May, where you can meet startups, startup accelerators and hubs, entrepreneurship societies, and ask your questions directly from them, as well as expand your business network. So feel free to browse our website for more details. The two startups pitching in our track today are NoLab and Glow Garden. Both of them have integrated the principles of environmental sustainability into their business models. And I'm happy to invite them to the stage. NOLAB is a process, a way to make what we need every day from the materials in our immediate environment. It is about re-innovating the way we interact with and engage with our materials. At NOLAB, we take packaging materials, broken machines and furniture and hack it until we can use it again. There is no waste at NOLAB. We have lots of ideas for closed loop products and rehacking packaging into complete grow systems. Every plastic container or carton is valuable and can be remade into something else. We are also going to be working on ways to recycle plastic into pellets for 3D printing with a shredder and an extruder. The shredder is going to shred the plastic we collect into tiny pieces which can be melted down and extruded into 3D printing filament. We lovingly call them silpuri and noodeli, and naturally they will help us make 3D doodles with filament noodles. At present, Nolab does not have a home, but we are situated in Tampere and belong to the Hack Lab community in Nekala. This hacker community has what it takes to bring unlikely companions together to make what we need every day. In this state of flux, we explore those spaces between home and industry, the worlds of material and expressing who we are by what we make. We zero in on the material pathways in our own homes and communities to bring them closer to our daily existence. Being home to us means having the skills, resources, and more importantly, the people around us to express our culture in a way that aligns with our values. It also means caring about the land we inhabit and not polluting it with waste. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Thomas from Block Garden, and what we do is we make edible grow boxes for people to grow at home. I mean, it's a really simple service. We provide you with a ready-made grow box, we deliver it to you in the spring, and we help you to grow it during the summer with our dedicated grow app. But actually, I'm not here to talk about our profitable rental box business today, and I'm not even going to be talking about our new product, 
made for kindergartens, uh, which is a box which will help to reduce the allergies of children. But what I'm going to talk about today is our new app. The app that we help, that we use to help people to grow food. And the idea is Block Garden, grow anything, anywhere. With our application, you can start up your own garden wherever you want, and you can grow anything in there. We've been developing the app for a, for a long time now, and it's going to be, or the MVP is going to be out in four weeks. We've been developing it together with a company called Vincent. So the app is soon ready, and we can be testing it this summer with 27 different plants. So you just set up your own garden with the plants that we provide, and you get weekly tasks and weekly instructions on how to take care of your plants. We also provide you some, some additional innovation on how you could perform better in your garden. And also we provide you with a community where you can communicate with other gardeners who, have similar, who are in a similar situation as you are. But this is what we are doing this summer. But our vision is somewhere else. It's somewhere way ahead of us. Because this app is something that we can scale up. I mean, it's something that we can take into a broader use in the future. And how we're going to do it is we're going to adapt some deep tech into it. Some sensors, some soil sensors, together with computer vision, machine learning, and we can teach AI to do some gardening. We can help people through a gardener AI. For example, you just take a picture of your plants, and it will tell you what's wrong with it. What are those black bugs which are eating away the cabbages? And how to get rid of them? Is it an infection? No, don't worry. We can take care of it like this. So we can help people to grow with AI in the future. And what we are doing right now is we are developing this app into a second level. We are going to publish the MVP version this summer. And together with an accelerator program, we are going to take it next level and implement deep tech into it. But what we are aiming for right now is that we need an investment to back up the, the development costs of the Deep Tech Act. So if you're interested in gardening, and if you see the future that I'm seeing, contact us. And let's talk more. So this concludes the live stream pitches for our sustainability theme. Feel free to vote for the pitch you like the most in the poll. Tommy, what can you say about the last two presenters? Oh, wow. Again, uh, like I'm really impressed of the, the quality here today. I'm really proud, guys, that, that you have been presenting your ideas, like in whether you are still making the idea level development there. Like that's the really the right way to do uh, that. You don't have ready made products, but you're open for calls for people to uh, partner with you and then come to help you out. So, so quick words uh, about both of the cases. So, so definitely null up. Uh, there's a true uh, commitment for, for the community approach uh, from that side. Definitely, I, I would just encourage to be really open and, and demonstrating with that and trying to find the first test, time, uh, test environment uh, with that as soon as possible. Hopefully, we could even help with that uh, here in, in local in Tampa region. 
And then uh, with uh, Thomas from Block Garden, uh, like, yeah, that, that's definitely something, a new angle for urban farming. Uh, yes, that, that's like the traditional approach to help people to have their own uh, local local uh, greeneries to be grown, but like that you would have a support from a uh, mobile app, uh, AI, uh, computer vision, like that, that's high level stuff. And uh, I, I like the vision, definitely there needs to be a lot of funding and, and technology expertise behind it. But hopefully you are some of the guys who could be uh, helping out and, and please uh, spread the word. Very promising one, thank you. All right, let's see what the rest of the audience thinks. Seems like Blog Garden is leading. Congrats. Thumbs up for the both ones. So we once again thank you all, all the startups who submitted their pitches. For those who submitted pitch for the live stream, a mentor will be contacting you via the Brella network to give you a one on one 15 minute feedback session. If you haven't heard from them already, please reach out to one of the organizers via the Brella chat tool. Now we are opening spontaneous open pitch breakout room. Everyone is welcome to join. Either you want to spontaneously pitch or just watch others ideas and give peer feedback. Just click on the breakout rooms tab on your side menu and join once the room opens. At 3.15, Brella Matchmaking tool will be open where you can book one-on-one -on -one meetings with other attendees and start networking and creating useful connections. Remember that you do not necessarily have to have a perfect pitch. Nothing in the breakout room is recorded or live streamed by us, so you will only be sharing your idea with other people in the room. So be brave and just get your idea out there. The more you talk about it, the more help you can get refining it. And who knows, maybe you will meet a potential co-founder or an investor. Thank you once again for joining this live stream and see you soon in the breakout rooms and in the one-on-one -on -one session.